On today's episode, my guest and I discuss a lot about Disney, his re- recent trip to Disney, what it feels like when you're there, um, just seeing your kids enjoy it. Um, am I am I uh, talking with dads? You either dads either hate it or love it. Uh, we discuss reasons why. Uh, like I said, we we spend that's what we nerd out about, and that's about 25 minutes of the episode. We talk about Disney and rides and food and everything. Then we get into goal settings and how we manage people and and um, how we help them achieve their goals. Talk some about Packers football and Aaron Rodgers. And we get a bunch of different stuff. So uh, uh, listen in and uh, please let me know what you think. You know, Find the Nerdball Podcast at all the social medias, nerdballpodcast at gmail.com. And now, here's my guest. This is Scott Buecher and this is the Nerdball Podcast. Lorenzo Melcher. All right, Scott. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Always a pleasure. Um, you're um, in our our new studios, Fort Mix CrossFit Studios. This is nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying the first time I've been here. I've, I've watched it a few times on yeah. YouTube. I don't think the YouTube uh, version gives it justice. So this is a nice little <laughs> nice little setup. Well, Especially one. the the thanks. Furby in the corner there. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Got the creepy eyes on me. Yeah, that that wasn't here last week or a couple weeks ago. So it's a maybe, spy. Yeah, it's a spy. <laughs> But uh, uh, quick shout out to them. For, this is Fort Meg's CrossFit Studios. Uh, they're known for their um, group fitness classes. Also have personal trainers, youth fitness programs, hit classes, which is high intensity interval training. No experience necessary. They actually they don't really care if you don't know anything because they want to train you how you want to be trained um, that, to your personal ability. They encourage. It's a encouraging atmosphere. We she was on the um, she will be on Thursday's podcast. Her name's Cindy. She'll the co owner. She'll be on here talk. You can hear more about it. All skill levels welcome. Classes seven days a week. If you want to know any more information, go to fortmegscrossfit.com. Scott, um, you're on here because I I had a request. Uh, My sister, Misty, said, I think it's about time to have another Scott. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Misty, huh? All right. Yeah, so. I always like Misty. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So she's on here. Thanks, Misty. Yeah, she asked, uh, it's time for another Scott Buecher. So here you are. Very good. And um, I'm sure I've asked you, but it may have changed. Um, but I have a tendency to my friends that I see on a daily basis. I don't ask them the "What are you nerding out about?" Yeah. question, and I yeah. don't know if I've ever asked you that. I don't think you have. Yeah, so so that's where we're at right now. What what what's something you're nerding out about? Obviously, you know it can't be about your job. Yeah, right. Right. Something something just to get away from that. And yeah. again, it could be seasonal. It could be you know, it could be Packer football right now. Who yeah. So know? you know, Packer football stressful for me a little bit. You know, <laughs> making a big game today against the Vikings. Got to win out to make the playoffs. We'll see what happens. But yeah. I tell you, I tell you what, probably what I've had a. Uh, a little bit of a fascination about for a while, and I think you'll appreciate this. We've talked about it briefly. Is uh, actually Disney World. Yeah. So we went to Disney over Thanksgiving. Brought brought Alice there and and Georgia and a, a magical four days. And, uh, and I've been there before. Mm-hmm. Um, probably didn't appreciate it to the level that I appreciated it when we were there Thanksgiving. And yeah. you and I have talked about this a little bit. Um, but just inner workings of it a little bit has been, been fascinating to me. So I actually. I downloaded on my Kindle a book all about like the biography on Walt Disney. Oh, really? Okay. So I just did that this morning. So I'm gonna I'm gonna probably start reading that. I'm an avid reader, so I'm gonna start reading that biography on Walt here probably today. Okay. Um, okay. you know, so just the inner workings of Disney World and the history behind it, and kind of like the old school like cartoons and how I grew up, and just mm-hmm. trying to get an understanding about more of like the process of it and the imagination of it and the creativity. So that's stuff I envy because I don't feel like I'm a very creative person. Yeah. So. To be able to learn from him a little bit, and why do you of, why do you feel you're not creative? Is it is, it be, is now when you th- say creative, like is it because like you don't paint or you don't take pictures or you don't? Like, yeah, I think that's a little bit. I think creativity is kind of like maybe like my creativity is not like that creativity. Correct. So that's I think, what I was getting into. Yeah. So I think maybe like my creativity is more of like I think I'm pretty strong with like like structural logistic logistics type of things mm-hmm. like the running joke at, at work is like if you need like an event coordinated or yeah. something like that or a spreadsheet <laughs> made you know things like that i, I, I could probably like yeah. tailor that for you so i think that's like a, kind of one form of creativity mm-hmm. um but the other form of creativity in terms of like art or music or theater yeah. things like that just not my wheelhouse and yeah. even like when i play play-doh with with alice like i just can't create Play-Doh. oh i tell you Lindsay what. and her mom can make these like yeah. impeccable Andrew's objects that way. Yeah. i can't i can't get like i get home and i see them and they got the whole scene of like charlie brown that's identical i mean you would have thought it was the actual claymation yeah. of these different things I'm like how do you guys do that yes and it, i every time i do it, it just looks like a glob it's the same random stuff so. same way uh 
Andrea is that same way. She's very artistic. Yeah. Like she can draw very well. And she, she has such a good mind for that. Uh, I am horrible at playing like make believe. Yeah. Like uh, Lily want to play with her dolls and stuff. And I just, Andrew does voices and yeah. has all these story arcs and everything. And I just, I cannot do that. See, that's, it's weird though, because like that's like the opposite in our household. So like whenever like Alice wants to play with her dolls, mm-hmm. she comes and gets me. Oh, really? And she takes me down to the basement and we go back and forth and we create scenes yeah. and all those different things. Lindsay doesn't really do that a whole lot with her. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not that she won't. I, she, I don't know. It's 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 nice that Alice has that with me, right? Sure, yeah. Um, but like, yeah, the the creativity with like the artwork and things like that. And like <laughs> Lindsay can paint with her. Yeah. Like does like the watercolor, and I can't. Like yeah. I can't even get the paint to work <laughs> half the time. So, so I like that, well, that type of stuff. Well, Lillian just got a book for Christmas where. It, the paper is white with the scene on it or yeah. whatever, and the paint's in the paper already. So you just need water. And oh, you just, perfect! You just yeah, go, we've had those. It, yeah, those. And <laughs> it like just the, goes over it. And then the, like those like magic color marker too. Like the same yes. thing. You just like one marker, just color, and all the sh- the colors just show up. Yep. You know? Yeah, we yeah we got those. So uh, I want to go back to Disney. Yeah. Um, so in my under- in in my feeling and just talking to dads about Disney, um, even on the my other podcast, three different dads downloaded everywhere. Yep. Um, I follow on YouTube too, by the way. Oh, and nice. Spotify. I think I, I, I think I had one follower on it. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> um, you, a dads either love it or hate it. There's nothing in between. Yeah. I feel like, and I, I mean, just again by talking already, like we both absolutely love it. It's For sure. awesome. Um, I just can't fathom why somebody wouldn't. I don't know. know. It's uh, you know, so I remember a a story. So I went to Disney my. Freshman year in college with my parents, my mm-hmm. sister, and then some of my sister's friends from college were there too. Okay, so it was my sister was a senior year that was a senior that year, and that was kind of her graduation gift from Ohio State. My parents took us all to Disney over spring break. OU and OSU spring breaks aligned, so that was great. Then all of our friends were down there. I remember we were on the Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> ride with their college friends, and which were all were all men, by the way. I don't <laughs> really? I know their no their <laughs> girls were there, so it's just weird. But anyway, so all these guys was like kind of looking around, they're like, all right, when you're a kid, like, it's the magic Disney, and then, like, we're sitting here right now, and all we can think about is, I wonder how much money is, like, <laughs> under the water right now that we don't know about. Yeah. Or, like, what are the logistical pieces to operate? It's a small world after yeah. all, the way. So I think your mind just, like, shifts a little bit potentially with that. So I, I, that's a great question. I don't know why some people hate it and some people love it. Yeah. You know, my um, sister loves Disney. Uh, she's been there a few times with her girls, but her husband hates it. Yeah. Thinks it's like the biggest money grab in the world. I think that's where um, dads are at. Like, like if you don't like it, it's because it costs a lot of money. Yeah. And maybe the reason why I love it is because I never see the financial piece of it because my wife's a financial advisor. Lindsay takes care of all that stuff. Yeah. So like, yeah. I actually never see a bill. Yeah. So I, I don't know. How I well, much see, it costs. I'm involved in that part of it, but I, we plan so much where when we go on vacation, any vacations, mm-hmm. Whatever we're doing is already like we already paid for it. Yeah, for sure. We saved up for it yep. and everything. So I'm not stressing about like oh after we're gonna pay this credit card bill at when we get back. Yeah, because you know, it's all done already. Yeah, I mean, I just think that's not like I don't want, I don't I don't want to go to Disney World or any vacation for that matter. Just stressing entirely like oh yes. we gotta watch how much money we're yeah. just kind of you're there to enjoy it. Just enjoy <laughs> it and and like you know your family does a great job with budget and and, and like I said Lindsay does that pr- predominantly for our family. And yeah. She does a great job for that too. And so like we never go to vacation ever thinking like, oh, we gotta watch our, you know, watch our cents or pennies, whatever it is, mm-hmm. because we plan for it. And there's no f- there's it dramatically decreases your fun. It level. does. It does. And you know, one of the things that we kind of talk about, Lindsay and I is like we, we think we live a pretty like pretty modestly to begin with. Yeah. You know, we don't we're not yeah. going out, you know, making like huge unnecessary per, per, uh, purchases or anything like that. So like we like to travel, we like yeah. to go on vacations, so we don't have to worry about those things. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, she does a nice job with that. The last thing I want to do when we go take our kids to Disney is is we tell them no. Like, yeah. can I buy that? And they're like, no, we don't have the funds for that. Yeah, because, right. I mean, there's still limits, Hold on, right? let me check my bank account yeah, real quick. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't want to do that. There's still limits on it. Like, I think, yeah. we, I think we let them buy one thing a day. Yeah. Uh, the last time, I think they brought – they had gift cards, so they could buy their gotcha. own things, too, for yeah. some stuff. Um, but what changed what, – what makes – I mean – I think Andrew and I can go to Disney World together just without mm-hmm. kids. But what makes it so much better is when they're there and they like see a princess or yeah. go on a ride and it was really cool and they had a lot of fun and seeing them laugh and smile and everything. Did, did know, I, so. I, have I shared in my stories with you about Disney? Uh, but about I, Alice's, Alice's first day there or anything like that? I don't remember. So, so this is a magical story that you just alluded to. So we, <laughs> we kept the whole thing a surprise for her. Okay, all right. 
So she did, she knew we were going to Florida. She had no idea we were going to Disney. World. And how old was she at this time? She's four. Okay. Just turned four. Um, is it? Oh, is it this past? Time yeah, just this past okay, November. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, so we we you know fly down there and and you know we get to the resort. We stayed at uh, Port Orleans Riverside. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, which is like you know designed to be like Tiana's you know resort or whatever. Yeah. And we check in. It's holiday season, right? So like the the lobby is all decorated in Christmas, and there's like Mickey Mouse stuff a little bit, but she still has like no idea like where we actually are. Yeah. And then there's a TV playing. And they're playing like. Oh wait, wait, wait! So she didn't even know you guys were. No, we're, okay, she just okay. knows we're at a hotel, right? Okay, all in right. Florida, she doesn't know we're actually at Disney World <laughs> at all. Okay, whatever. So we check in and they hand her like a roll of like twenty Mickey Mouse stickers. It's, yeah. And still nothing. Like is like clicking with her. And there's a TV playing of all the Disney princess movies. Yeah. And she sits and watches it with another, another little girl, and whatever. And so we walk out of the lobby and the the. The Port Orleans Riverside is it's outdoors and there's this little river that you've got to cross to get over into where the rooms are. Mm-hmm. And as we walk out there, there's Jasmine right right there and like signing uh-huh. on taking pictures and Alice gets super excited. Jasmine, Jasmine, Jasmine. Yeah. And Alice goes, Wait a minute. <laughs> What's Jasmine doing here? She lives in Disney World. Yeah. And Lindsay and I was like, Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> so she goes, She must be on vacation too. <laughs> 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 she continues to walk, right? Yeah. And so we're like, oh my gosh, right? And so we walk, we get into the room, and you open up the room, and it's decorated like in Disney princess like artwork all over, mm-hmm. and, and Alice just loves the princesses, so she's yeah. like going berserk, pointing, she can't believe this, and then they give you this like handwritten note that's supposed to be for, from Tiana, like welcoming her to her room, yeah. so like she can't believe it, she's jumping up and down, and so we got there on a Wednesday, we weren't going to any parks on a Wednesday. And her um, our initial plan was to, um, you know, get to the room, nap, yeah, right, and then go to the, like go to the pool there sure. and the resort and things like that. And then Thursday we're gonna go to Magic Kingdom. So we can't get her a nap because she's like so excited with the princesses and, and things like that. But still doesn't know you're in Disney World. Still has no idea. We're was in Disney that World. was that your guys' plan the whole time? Was just to not mention yeah. it until she figured it out? Yeah, we were gonna okay. wait until to see if she would ever figure it out on her own, <laughs> and then. Um, and so, like, we just kind of, like, hung out in the room for a little bit. And finally, we went to dinner right at the resort there. We had reservations, um, had dinner or whatever. We're, like, we're, like, and people are, like, wearing Mickey Mouse shirts everywhere. And, <laughs> and like, I remember at one point, the uh, the waitress, I signed a check, and it was, like, a Disney pen. And, yeah. And then she's, like, she doesn't see the pen. And I'm, like, well, she can't read. I mean, <laughs> so, you know, sign it, whatever. And, and, like, behind our beds in the room, like you could press a button and, and Cinderella's castle. Like when you press the button, like fireworks, you should. So like oh, Alice wow. won't go to bed because she keeps pressing this button <laughs> to see the fireworks. And we finally get her to go to bed. And the next day's Thursday. And, um, we get up and say, hey, we're going to go to a park today. Yeah. And she doesn't want to leave the room because all the princesses yeah. are in the room. Right. We're like, no, we're going to go to the park. And so we get her dressed and, and then we brought, um, we brought Chelsea, the elf, the elf on the shelf. Okay. Yeah. Type of thing. And yeah. so like she came that night and left everybody matching Disney Christmas pajamas. Oh, nice. And like a Mickey Mouse hat and like a princess autograph notebook. And so like Alice, super excited, still no idea. <laughs> and so we get her dressed and then we have her like literally dressed with her Mickey Mouse hat, Mickey Mouse, like zip up hoodie, <laughs> shirt, everything, right? And then we're taking the, the Disney buses yeah. to the Magic Kingdom. And so we're sitting there waiting for the bus and all the buses have all the, the different Disney characters. Yeah. So she goes... Frozen, Mickey Mouse, yeah. Encanto, all these different things, right? And uh, so, so we get on the bus, and there's like Disney stuff all over with the advertisements, and everybody on this bus is wearing like Mickey Mouse ears. <laughs> still, and, and where, where are you going? Are you now? Are at this? At any point, are you worried? Like, okay, what's what do you? <laughs> are you aware of your out of your surroundings? Well, we always <laughs> thought Alice was like super smart. Now I'm questioning <laughs> that maybe. So, yeah, so. I, yeah, I didn't want to say that because I'm not her dad, but yeah, yeah, right. And then uh, so I was just kind of sitting there, and she goes. And she goes, what park are we going to? We're, going, we're just going to the park. She goes, like, Woodland Park? We're like, yeah, hey, a little different than Woodland Park. <laughs> she goes, okay. <laughs> so, so we get to the Magic Kingdom, and we, we, we go through the entrance, and obviously you've been there. So right when you enter, it, it's at that main drag right mm-hmm. there, right? And it was yeah. kind of like, it was early. It's probably like at 9 o'clock in the morning, maybe maybe even earlier. So it was a little, like, foggy. And then if you look straight down that main, you see Cinderella's Castle. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're walking down, and... And we get in that main drag, and then Alice is just kind of walk happy to be there. She looks up and she goes, Cinderella's <laughs> castle. And she starts like jump out and pointing it. Yeah. And we're like, Yeah. She goes, It's Cinderella's castle. And we're like, Yeah. And then we're like, Where are we? She goes, 
Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. And then it was kind of like on from there. Yeah. So she just run in and did all the rides. And <laughs> at that point, she she was su- like super excited. That's um, we so we we surprised our kids too, but it was just like suitcases and stuff, yeah. you know, on on Christmas. Um, but but the surprise part of it, like just playing and all this stuff, and for you, it must have been like. Because you were waiting, basically waiting until you got to Magic Kingdom. Yeah. You're like the, every time you're like, oh, is she gonna figure it out? Oh, is she gonna yeah, figure well, it even out? Like, well, even like before we left. <laughs> okay. Right? I mean, so like the weekend before we left, Lindsay's mom comes over and gives her a set of like all the Disney character stuffed animals, mm-hmm. like Mickey and Pluto and Goofy. And and like says something like, What are you gonna do in Florida? Yeah. She goes, I don't know. She goes, Are you gonna go to Disney World in Florida? <laughs> well, maybe next time you can go to Disney World somewhere <laughs> where she was, right? So like, but uh, she never picked up on it. So yeah. but it was it was it was cool. And you know, I, I like sharing those stories and I was telling different people at work about them. And yeah, you know, a lot of times people come back and say, you know, we didn't want to take our kids there when they're that young because they won't remember it. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to remember it. I mean, yes. those are my memories. Yes. Right. Yeah. And uh, so I'll never f- forget those type of things. Well, well, that's that how cool. that's how we felt too. So when we went, um, I think we waited until I think Mateo was eight and Lily was five. I think I can't remember. Um, and because that was kind of the same thing too. Yeah. Like because our thought was like we're going one time and that's it because it's expensive. Mm. And then we went. And we're like, ah, we'll go every five years. And now it's like every two or three years. Two years, yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, but I mean, obviously you understand what people are saying when they're like, ah, they never even remember it. But, but now for us, like, well, again, you yeah. said it's our memories. And yeah. like, if we decided we're going to keep going. Like, it's, it's so much fun. We're going to keep going. For sure. Now, with, with, did you bring, uh, your youngest too with you? Oh, yeah. We brought Georgia. Yep. Okay. So, how it's, it always seems like not a terrible time, but it just seems like a lot of work when you bring a baby. You know? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I mean, we've, you know, so when we had Alice, like, I'm like, so the dynamics on Lindsay and I's relationship is she's like the, yeah, what, what what bad could happen, you know, type of person. <laughs> Let's just try stuff. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, a lot of bad could happen. <laughs> and I'm like more reserved. If, if it was probably just me, like, I'd probably never leave the house. Okay, right. Yeah. And uh, it's like, <laughs> we started traveling with Alice when I was like five months old. Mm-hmm. And so we just got kind of gotten a nice little system with how to travel with young kids and uh, we took georgia to florida when she was three months old yeah you know, for spring break last year so we kind of understand the traveling piece of it now um so the traveling piece isn't bad with with georgia so georgia's at the time was 10 months and then it, what kind of happened though like when we were there was like oh, she, she can't do anything right can't do any rides so a lot mm-hmm. of times like alice and Lindsay would go on the rides i was gonna ask of, you about the rides yeah yeah and i kind of stay 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 with georgia in the stroller and we kind of you know, just kind of hang out a little bit. There's a couple of rides where we all of us were able to go on. Like we all went on It's a Small World. Yep. And we all went on the... Um, this is the longest ride in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> you know it's good when like an hour and a half later, all of a sudden Alice was like, it's a small <laughs> world. <laughs> I was like, you got to be kidding me, right? Um, and then we went on the... Uh, in, I, mean, I think it was uh, Hollywood Studios. Right? There's like the Mickey Mouse, like run away rail yeah we, we haven't done that yet. yeah we yeah. did that that was pretty cool yeah. that was that was neat okay. so like georgia went on that one with us too um and there's probably some other ones that she could have gone that we could just held her but she's like sleeping and sure whatever so it wasn't that big of a deal um you know all the way through you just you just have to like it's, it's just one of two things it's either like you gotta like dictate like your schedule is gonna be dictated by their schedule yeah. or the understanding of like yeah she's probably gonna sleep in the stroller and there's one of you's gonna have to like, kind of like entertain yourself for an hour and a half when you're in line a little bit so um, which was fine. It wasn't a big deal. Did you get a double stroller? No. So no. we well, we got a double stroller, and the kids were older, and we were like, you know, I think it, I think they were seven to four, but we got a double stroller, and that was the best thing. So we we, we definitely did a research on this a little bit with like. So we had a my sister gifted us her double stroller about a year ago. We took it to Florida just from break, mm-hmm. and it was like it was just so big, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, and a lot of times like. You know, Alice wanted to walk, and it was just a pain in the butt to kind of get her in or out. And yeah. It's double stroller, and then like where we go for spring break, like we walk everywhere, and all the restaurants that we, I mean, we couldn't navigate this this gigantic double stroller and <laughs> yeah. these like sidewalks and these restaurants and things like that. So, um, I was actually talking to Ashley Mundrick, who I know you know Ashley. Mm-hmm. Um, so her and her family went to Disney World in I think June, maybe this past year, and she had said, you know, get the stroller where. Um, the 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 older kid can stand there's like that platform yeah. facing you yeah so we got that and that was like the godsend yeah. for us i mean so it was 
so we had it. It was easy to, to fold up, fold down. It was small, it was compact. Alice was able to stand or sit, you know, on it all the way if she needed to. It was easy to hop on, hop off. Mm-hmm. It was easy going through the airport, all that stuff. So we uh, we got that. That was definitely worth every cent that we that we paid for it. We rented. Uh, sorry, when we first went, our travel agent said, "Hey, there's rental companies because you can get them at the parks, yep. but you're not always guaranteed that they're going to be there." Yeah. Uh, but or you can rent one; and it'll be there when you guys show up. So we rented one. It was at our hotel, um, and it was like a, it was like a just one big seat, yep. and the kids sat next. Oh, to really? Each other. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then we we just pushed it. But it was, it was. I loved it. You know, that's where Lillian would catch quick naps. You yep. know, twenty twenty five minute naps for that sure she, that she needed. Um, everybody needed her yeah, to right. take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> um, but but it was awesome. And the one memory I have from that, besides being able to like. Put, our, put all our shit in there you yeah. know, that we bought. Um, we were at Epcot, and it was a downpour. Yeah. And so everyone was leaving the park. It came with a um, plastic cover you could put over it. Yep. So if it did rain, the kids wouldn't get wet. Andrew and I were soaked. Uh, there was water. Kids were dry, though. Yes. Yeah. There was water. Like, we were in puddles that was, like, six inches deep. The drains just couldn't keep up with the amount of water. Yeah. And we're just running through the park, and our kids are cracking up. You could tell they're they're like laughing so much because all the plastics all foggy because they're just they're just so hot in there just laughing because it was June also. Yeah, yeah right. Um, but it was it was so funny just to hear them like cracking up as we're just trying to run through all these yeah. storms and everything. That's it was funny. fun though. Yeah. But but yeah, it was. I'm glad we got that. We yeah, got that stroller. And the remember, kids, the kids asked if we were gonna get it again. It's like, no, we're you guys are old enough. We're not gonna get a yeah, stroller right. again. I remember walking by like where you, probably a place where you can like rent those and mm-hmm. just seen like everywhere and like this long line of families just <laughs> waiting to check them out or like yeah. hoping they get one. I'm not sure what it was, but that's why our travel agent said rent one from this other outside company. Yeah, uh, or it might have even been part of Disney too. But that way you have it at your hotel and mm-hmm. you're you don't have to stand those lines or cross your fingers that one's gonna be there. Yeah, you know. So but, yeah, what we did worked out fine and that. That stroller was nice. We'll take it to. We'll go back to. We always go to Lido Beach in the for spring breaks. We'll go back there and use it there too. Yeah, it'll be, it's, it'll be nice. I always when I when I see families there with like babies, I'm like, ah man, it. I would feel like it's you can't um, you can't taking kids that young. Even even when we took Lillian, she wasn't quite big enough to mm-hmm. go on certain rides. But taking kids that that young, it's like, well, you can't like do everything you want to do. Yeah. But there's so much to do anyway. Like it doesn't. We matter. We probably did less than five percent of what she could do there. <laughs> yeah. You know, to be yeah. honest, like when we got to Magic Kingdom, it was one of those things where it's like, all right, let's. And because Alice isn't even big enough to do mm-hmm. majority of the stuff there, so like, all right, what yeah. are the things that like we think she'd like? All right, Dumbo and the teacups and Little Mermaid ride. Yeah, and yeah. she had reservations at the Bippity Boppity Boutique, yeah, and yeah. she did that. And like, we got to do Peter Pan, and it's a small world, you know. But like, we didn't probably we didn't do. And then like, we went to Epcot, and then we went to the, the Hollywood Studios, and there we just touched the surface. Yeah, on like yeah. what you could do there. We are we changed so much. Like the first one we were and I don't know how you guys were, but the first time we were there it was park opens, we're there, and when it's closing they're telling us to get out and we were yeah. there all day. Yeah. And then the second time we went, we we ended up back at a hotel about, you know, five, six, seven o'clock every night. And yeah. We were able to eat dinner and go our, to the pool and stuff. It's it's funny because our initial plan was like on that Thursday from Magic we're hey, we're gonna go there till about I like, get there like at eight or nine whenever it opened, right? And then go to about like two. And then go back, nap, all that stuff. And yeah. then we had dinner reservations because we did like a planner like you had. Yeah. And then we had dinner res- reservations back at the Magic Kingdom like at 530 or whatever it was. And then like we were there and then we we're just like, yeah, this just isn't going to happen. So yeah. we, we, like, we stayed there the entire time until our dinner reservations and then left. And then like the next day we went to I think Epcot. And then that that time we, we did go back, did naps, and we went, then we went back to Epcot. And I think we did the same thing on – on uh, the Hollywood studio one too. So yeah, it just kind of like, just depends on the day, I guess. I think that's what changed for us is we didn't have a lot of dinner reservations mm-hmm. this, this, se- this second time we went. It was breakfast or lunch. Mm-hmm. And even then it wasn't a lot of sit down stuff just because they, st- they still had some COVID stuff. Yeah. So um, like there wasn't any buffets or anything. Gotcha, and then yeah. the characters would come around. You could take pictures, but they had to stand like back a little bit. Gotcha. You know? So it, stuff changed. Yeah. So we didn't do a lot of those sit down places. Yeah. But- we had the breakfast at the... Uh, uh, Riviera, where the, the the character breakfast, like yeah. Mickey and Donald and Daisy, and they, I mean, they, they came right out to your table and yeah. hugged the girls and all that stuff. So yeah, that was yeah. cool. That was yeah. That's again, that's the best part is just watching them. Oh yeah, know, be super excited oh, about yeah. all, oh, about yeah, all that sure. stuff for sure. You're yeah. like when you're adult, you're like, I mean, this stuff is cool, but yeah. you're like, well, yeah. it's probably just Tom in a 
in that outfit or no, whatever. You no, know it's what I mean? not. No, it's not. It's real. <laughs> That's actually Donald. My bad. Yeah, That's right. what I said, Don. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, so are you guys planning on going more? Yeah, we'll go again. We'll, yeah. we'll probably, you know, actually, like, we, we, we enjoyed it a lot. And and uh, I think Lindsay kind of want, has like this, like, a Disney cruise mm. kind of, like, dream kind of, like, set a yeah. little bit. And, and we reached back out to our planners. I said, any type of, like, cruises, like, at this time, right? And she goes, oh, yeah, you know, there's four or five-day cruises. However, it's, like, the, literally the most expensive time to go. Yeah. So. There's so much. I feel like, I think I looked at them. There's so much, I, there's so much more expensive than going to. Yeah, Disney World. Yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds like. So, like, we're we're definitely gonna go again. I mean, I loved it. Yeah. Um, Lindsay loves it, but we're gonna I, we'll probably wait until Georgia's probably like where Alice is, so like at four. Okay. Yeah. And then like, I think what I'm really, really looking forward to when we go that second time is because I like Alice, at least now, like really like likes like look after Georgia. So, like I, I think it'd be really cool to watch Alice. Like on oh, Georgia, we're gonna oh, go on this yeah. ride together and this ride together. So yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that kind of plays out that way. <laughs> With the arcade being older too, we're we're able to go on like the roller coasters yeah. and like. One of my favorite things, Mateo did it when he was seven, when we went the first time, and then we did it again as that uh, Tower of Terror. Oh, yeah. At the Hollywood Studios. We did that, and I think he'd like to see me get really scared because I'm terrified and yeah. I scream really loud and everything. You get he terrified on Tower of Terror? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I get terrified on any. Like, really? I, I do not like roller coasters. Really? But they're fun, and I understand that they're fun, and yeah. I still enjoy myself, but when I'm yeah. in it, like, phew, you're like, it's, oh gosh! I do don't like heights. That tower terror. It, the best to do it at night. Because, oh, for sure. Because the whole park's lit up. You yeah. can see out and everything. But yeah. it's oh. that's like Cedar Point. I mean, I love Cedar Point, but I, I like I hate like like the Millennium Force when you kind of go up and looking over with the water right yeah. there. I get like almost like sick to my stomach. So I figured out if I'm going to do Millennium, it's going to be at night where I can't see anything. Oh, I'm just yeah. looking straight ahead. Yeah. You know, just go. <laughs> Yeah, man, but but well, I'm glad you had fun, man. Yeah, it's, that was good. It's, it was uh, fun. It was magical. It was, yeah, it was a great time. Jimmy said he's going next Christmas. Man, he hates uh, it. He's one of these guys that he's we'll going see, in. Well, was... I told him I was like, he's not even responsible for the financial part because someone's paying for it. Someone else is paying for okay. it. Okay, uh, golden. Uh, so I told him I was like, Jim, that's yeah. the worst part about it. Right. Like, go yeah. and have fun, man. So let me ask this question: So when you went both times, were you a entire family matching shirt family? Um, Andrea. We did. We didn't do it every day. Yeah. But we did. Um, one time we went to the a- a- Animal Kingdom. We all had the same shirt, like a Hakuna Matata shirt. Yeah. Um, there was a few times where I think we we did it more when the first time we went. Yeah. Um, but we never had like Melcher vacation twenty twenty whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we didn't do any of that stuff. But I think a few times we. We uh, dressed in the same okay. shirt. It might have only been one or two days at most. See, I think it's a, a high probability day. So we were at Magic Kingdom on Thursday, which would have been Thanksgiving. Yeah. Where we were the only family that didn't have some type of <laughs> Thanksgiving Disney family matching shirts. Yeah. And like, there's like a big like group text with all the office workers at school. <laughs> And so I'm texting them photos, and they're like, having a great time. Like, I'm very thankful that I don't have matchy family <laughs> shirts right now. No, we never made our own. Yeah. Uh, that might be a little step too far for us. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, there was we definitely coordinated some stuff. I hope Jimmy's family is matching shirts. <laughs> I really do. Uh, I bet, uh, just hearing a little bit about his in-laws who are, who are funding this yeah. operation, I bet there is a uh, – we're all wearing a shirt today. In Mickey Mouse thing. ears. Yeah. Yes, I hope it's all the stuff Jimmy hates. <laughs> he he's he he's. I think he's going into it wanting to have a bad time. Yeah, I it's think that's horrible mindset, it Jim. It's it's gonna be a good time, and the best part for me, one of the best parts is food. Oh yeah, all the different kinds of foods and stuff, and so I think he just has. A what was it? Did, one. I remember you guys were talking about the size of the donuts, the Joffrey's the, donut. Joffrey's donuts. Yeah, I was in line for a coffee and saw that. Then I, I took a picture and sent to Lindsay. Yeah. Lindsay loves donuts, which yeah. you know how healthy she is. She loves donuts. I'm like, look at this thing. It's the size of my head. You, you didn't get one. It? No, we didn't get one. Oh man, um, the coffee was good though. Sometimes you got to stand. On, we stood in line for like 45 minutes. I stood in line for like just to get six, a donut. Like six minutes just yeah. to get a coffee. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Good yeah. coffee. Um, what else has been going on, man? I know you got your Packers gear. I'm assuming you're going to go watch the game with your dad. Uh, yeah, we're going to watch it somehow. Maybe maybe him come over a little bit and watch it. <laughs> yeah. Um, has he been – because I know before uh, you had mentioned that – you had never mentioned that he would come over, but you would always go over there yeah. and hang out. Now, I would imagine with like uh, – I know with my with my dad, like he likes when I go and bring Mateo with me. Yeah. So I'd imagine that's part of it too. He's like, hey, I want to come over and see the girls and watch football. Yeah, well, typically – so let's uh, – the truth the, the truth behind it is this <laughs> – is. Uh, you know, if we're at my house, it's it's hard to like watch something because yeah. like the girls always like see the TV on and they're like, oh, 
and the girls mean Alice. I want to watch this. I want to watch that. Yeah. So it's hard for her. Like she's still learning like the kind of like the share piece of it. And then it's hard. So it's a late game. It's a, it's a 4.30, 4.45 game. You know, so if I'm over my dad's, you know, it's, it's hard getting, you know, both girls to bed and, you know, and things like that. So I might see if he wants to come over and he can see the girls a little bit and watch the game at our house. It's, it's on a national it's on CBS, so oh, okay, okay. And you'll be able to watch it because I don't have cable. Um, you know, to be able to watch it that way, and and he can see the girls. So I'm reach out to see if he wants to do that. Yeah, but typically I'll go over there to watch it if it's like one o'clock or something. You guys ever? But, do you guys get like food and stuff too? My dad usually cooks. Yeah, is yeah. it just you two? Yeah, typically. Yeah, yeah my yeah. mom was alive. It was all of us. We sure. Yeah, it was kind of like our our Sunday routine a little bit. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but as you know, things kind of change when you have kids. <laughs> and Alice has been under the weather too, yeah. so she's finally feeling better today. Good. Um, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, it's, you know, being a Packer fan this year has been kind of the, that roller coaster. Do you want right? Aaron Rodgers to be there anymore? Ah, uh, it's a good or question. I saw, do. I go back and forth on yeah. Rodgers, right? I mean, I really do. There's sometimes I really, I'm like, that's his ride with him. Other times I'm just like, oh, what's, what's going on here? Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's tough to say. I mean, I just, it's, you know, you, you, you watch the games this year and you're like, what is, you know, he misses throws. He misses reads. I mean, there's guys running wide open. He's not pulling the trigger on it. Yeah. And you're like, okay, what what is it? Is it that trust thing that you keep hearing about? You know, he doesn't have the trust in, the, in these receivers. Is it he's losing the step? Is it the thumb? Is it the ribs? You know, what what is going on this year compared to other years? Yeah. Um, are you better off? You know, at some point, you got to figure out what you're going to do with your other quarterback. Yeah. Right? Well, and this he, happened once before when it was Matt Flynn, and he got this giant contract, and then yeah. <laughs> nothing ever happened. <laughs> yeah, Matt Flynn Matt Flynn got beat out his first year by Russell Wilson yeah. in Seattle. And yeah. Flynn kind of flamed out of the league. That but was the, it. But the difference on that is Flynn was a seventh-round draft pick where mm-hmm. they didn't ever have any anticipation of him taking over. I mean, they, I mean, they traded up to go get Jordan Love. Yeah. And – you know, because they thought he was going to be the guy. How long has he been there now? Two years? Or this is years? his third year. Third year, okay. Yeah. This is his third year, right? Yeah. And um, so you know, any you, know, you know how like, like devious Rogers is. He's very intentional with everything he says. It's like everybody's like, "Is this his last year? What's going on?" And you know, early in the year, he made a, a comment about him and Love's career. You know, can't help but see the similarities. You know, I sat behind Brett for three years before I took over. This is Jordan's third year behind me. Yeah, yeah. Is he saying something there? And then he does the the McAfee show and the. Uh, does he do that every week? Every Tuesday, yeah. he, he's on McAfee and he does his book club. And one of his, you know, right when like people are really starting to criticize his play and saying this is like when everybody thought Green Bay was dead in the water. Yeah. Like, hey, you need to make the move to Jordan Love now. You know, find out what he's got. His um, his book of the week was Love Wins. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sitting there, you're like, okay, you, oh you know, you gosh. know, this guy's doing this <laughs> intentionally, right? So like, he's dropping all these different things. So you. I know he's all time great for sure. Yeah, but like that's that's kind of like where you got to figure out you know the business versus the sentimental side. Also, I of f- different things. I feel like I feel like he he comes off as someone who also doesn't want to teach, like like uh, some be, or be a mentor or whatever to like the next person. And, yeah, and I've heard that too. Like where it's just like no, they they don't really talk or they don't really talk about football stuff or you know they just. Yeah, it's interesting because I think it's like with Rodgers, you hear both ways. You hear some guys, you know, who've who've left the organization say, listen, he's a horrible leader. He doesn't, you know, he isolates himself. He has his guys and that's it. You know, he's he's not approachable. And then you have other guys who say the complete opposite. Yeah. And so where does the truth lie? Probably somewhere in the middle somewhere. Um You know, I you know, I the story came out a couple weeks ago. I don't know if you saw about the hand signal stuff, right? No, I didn't see that. So the athletic ran a story about. Do you subscribe to that, by the way? I do. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I do. I always um, think about doing that because they, yeah. they always have good headlines that I was like, oh, it's, I want to click on that. I was like, oh, it's an athletic story. It's yeah, just, yeah, I have it, and it's it's worth it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, athletic ran a story about this this hand signal thing, where it's, you know, he has all these hand signals with his receivers that are never explicitly taught, and mm. it's just one of those things where he has them, and the expectation is everybody's got to know them, and. Uh, if you don't, and then like, so the athletic talked to some former receivers at with Green, with Green Bay, and they kind of like, there's quotes saying, you know, these things are never taught to us. You know, it's you just got to figure it out on your own. He'll sometimes pull out signals from six years ago, <laughs> and you've got to like be in tune. So like, as yeah. a coach, you probably understand this. You know, so when he's he's running seven on sevens or whatever it is, and he's or doing one on ones, and he's looking over to his experienced guy, he's doing signals. 
that these guys have been around him, like Alan Lazard and Cobb, the expectations for these young guys to be on the sideline like, watching these, yeah. like, okay, when he does this and Lazard does this, this is what it means. And that happens they, like they, they 10% know of that. the time. Yeah, right? Yeah. They should know all this stuff. And it's ever explicitly taught. And then the, these guys talk about how on Saturdays he would uh, run these meetings and quiz everybody <laughs> on these signals. And if you got one wrong, he'd like, sh- like stare you like the death stare or whatever. You know, with it. And that's where like all these foundationals of trust is yeah. like, if you're not getting these signals right, he's not throwing you the ball. And so what was interesting though, in that same article, they interviewed Randall Cobb, you know, who out there, you know, Cobb and Rogers, good friends, all yeah, that yeah. stuff, right? Cobb's like, yeah, that's true. But uh, this isn't high school and college. This is your job. Yeah. Know the signals. You know, it's your job to pay attention and learn it and all these different things and, and never like debated it and, you know, things like that. And then these receivers talk about like how approachable he is, how like nobody's comfortable going up and talking to him and things like that. And, and then, um, and then what was interesting was like the article had mentioned that when he was for years he'd he'd run these meetings on Saturdays, mm-hmm. and then this year Jordan Love is running them now. So oh, really? Love is quizzing everybody on the signals, and Rogers is kind of sitting in the back, kind of like overseeing it, or whatever. So Rogers goes on McAfee and says it's a it's a nothing article. It's one of the biggest rubbish things. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. Yeah. You know, I'm not pulling out signals from six years ago. You know, all this stuff is taught. You know, all this stuff, whatever it is. But in the article, they talked about like these young guys who are no longer with the franchise talk about how unapproachable he is. Yeah. But then there's an article in the Athletic in like August talking about how like Rogers intentionally sits and eats lunch by himself to see who comes to approach him. Yeah. And some of these rookies would like, there's a rookie defensive lineman who's his first year went and is like, why is he sitting by himself? So he goes, I just start sitting with him, you know, and and struck up a friendship with yeah. him. You know, you just got to go approach him, you know, and he's a very calculated person you yeah. know so i don't know it goes both ways that seems um it seems like a hard way to like like for me i always i always see like i'm a i'm a big guy i'm six two um me and my dad have this conversation where he my dad looks like he's mean and he likes that because he doesn't always he just wants to be able to talk to people when he wants to talk yeah. to people and i feel like if you don't know me, I gotta fight the fact that I look how I look. Oh, yeah, so for sure. I always go to people. I'm like, "Hey, how you doing? My name is Lorenzo. You know, talk to people because I want to talk to people. I want to seem approachable." Sure. Yeah. So that's so. It's just I, it, it it bothers me so much because I I work hard to make sure I'm approachable and to go talk to people and to sit with people and then like like him, the leader of a franchise, yeah. is like, "Well, whatever. Yeah, right, come I mean, to me if you want." I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It's it, it's just I'm I'm also not a professional athlete, so I'm sure that plays a lot into it. I don't it know. Too. I mean, but you hear about this stuff. I mean. If you get to a point where you're a guy like Aaron Rodgers, a status Tom Brady, Michael mm-hmm. Jordan, you know, far when he was there, yeah, you know, all these guys, I mean, he, LeBron James, all these guys, it's the same stories, right? It's, yeah, you know, yeah. And where, where does truth lie? Somewhere in between. Yeah. You also got to you know? be, you're not, you're going to be a great because your work ethic and because you're a certain way and because your yep. mentality and that, I mean, you're, Kobe Bryant was seemed yeah. like he was always a jerk. Yeah, you know? exactly. But, I mean, but that's just the way they are, and you you're know, right. It's just, it's just tough. It just so seems it's, like so. It's hard. I mean, it's hard to like actually take anything like, you know, at a hundred percent. Like, yeah, this is how it is. Yeah, yeah. For any of those, any of those guys, because nobody, nobody really knows, yeah. and like everybody's perception is different. All these young receivers may perceive them this way, but like to your point, it's maybe like, and maybe it's like an internal thing. Like, were they like? They're introverts. Yeah. They're not, not, I'm not going to go approach somebody. Yep. You know, because that's not who I am. But, like, not to say, that like, he was completely unapproachable. Mm-hmm. So, who knows? I think it's just kind of out there. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's have, different. Have you gone to a Packer game this year? Uh, no, not this year. No. So, do you uh, usually, do you try to go, like, once every year or two? Um, yeah, my dad and I went last year to a game up at Lambeau. Um, yeah, we've been to, my dad and I, you know, well, well, when I was, you know, the story is, and you're probably familiar with, you know, my mom's from Green Bay, right? Yeah. Um, that's where my mom and my dad met. Um, my grandparents lived just north of Green Bay. So every summer vacation was, was Green Bay, Wisconsin, <laughs> right? Right before school started in yeah. August. And so we'd go down to training camp every year, you know, which was a lot of fun and collect autographs and all that stuff. And you usually see a preseason game or uh, the family night that they have there, which is fun. And then um, I've probably seen – I've probably actually only seen three or four games actually at Lambeau. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I went one time. You know, Matt Hollinger lives there now. Yeah. And his wife works for the Packers. She's a waitress in the suites. 
you know, so we went up there, me and Tyler, a couple of years ago uh, for a game, got up in the suites. She got us in there, which was nice. And my dad and I went last year. So, and then we started going to games in Detroit. Yeah. Detroit fans were so bad. Really? I mean, when, like back in like the Pontiac <laughs> Silverdome days. Yeah. yeah. I remember my, my parents said they used to buy tickets as high up as they could get <laughs> because people would throw stuff at us. Yeah. Like just continuously throw food and, and whatever. And it was so bad. And then, and then Ford, and then like, you know, obviously the Packers have been completely dominant for, for years. And then Ford Field got a little better. So we've seen them a couple times in Ford Field, seen yeah. them a couple times in Cleveland. Um, I wouldn't say it's every year, it's once every couple of years. We'll try to see them. I honestly, I'm at the point where I, if like, we don't see them at Lambo. Then I'm, I really don't have an interest in going to another oh, okay. venue, yeah. Yeah. just because like NFL fans, you know this. It's it's just crazy. Yeah, it's a lot different than MLB games, where it's a lot more relaxed <laughs> yes, and chill. 100%. You know, ML, like football. I mean, it's it's rough. Yeah, it's rough. So I'd I, rather just watch those games at home. I don't. I don't remember the last Cowboys game I saw was in Detroit. I remember. Um, I don't even think I could drive yet, um, but I haven't seen a. A professional game in a long time. Yeah. Mateo went to his first professional game when the Bills had to move their game. Oh yeah, um, I remember that. To to Detroit, Detroit. So yeah, Mateo went up there to watch it with Andrea and her sister and her mom. Um, but he was like, he's like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of bummed. I'm kind of upset or sad that my first game isn't a Cowboys game. I'm like, well, but it's, it is what it, <laughs> it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's an NFL game, right? Yeah. But he he loves football so much more than I did mm-hmm. as a kid and knows so much. I think it's because he has access to it on his oh, yeah. phone, right? For sure. And he can just see all this stuff. But he, if you ask him about a certain player, like um, we were watching a game last night, that Ohio State game, yeah. and he goes, and someone mentioned Chris Olave. He yeah. goes, oh, Chris Olave, he plays for the Saints now. Oh, yeah. And like, I would not have known that like, yeah. if I was. It's in my cause, fantasy cause team. We, we don't even like the the Buckeyes. Yeah, like, right. So why yeah. would he know that information? Yeah. The Buckeyes or the Saints. Yeah, right. So he knows so much. Yeah. And he even, like, they're talking about Marvin Harrison Jr., and he goes, mm. there was a Marvin Harrison that played in the NFL, right? And that was a long time ago, yeah. you know? I was like, yeah, yeah, he played for the Colts. He goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. It's yeah. all famer, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's it's so crazy to me because, like, like, for a long time, I'm like, well, I don't know if he's going to like playing football yeah. or whatever. I mean, he loves football. Uh, he liked playing tackle football. He'll keep, you know, he'll play it again next year. But, like, his knowledge of it, or just in just sports in general, because mm. like I love sports, but it's so much more. For sure. You know, and it's, and it's just because he has, like I said, he has access to all that stuff. Yeah. Every... every Sunday or every Monday morning, he'll come down the stairs uh, when I'm about to leave for work, and he'll put on the he'll YouTube the Cowboys versus whoever whoever they played that weekend. Yeah, just to see the highlights and stuff because he can't always watch the games for sure. Um, but it's it's cool to see. It's cool to, so, to see that. So a Cowboys fan, pretty jacked for the playoffs. Um, They're gonna be pretty good. I mean, he's excited. Yeah, I I have tempered expectations because. So are you in the camp? Everything. If you're in the camp, if McCarthy loses round one, that they're going to fire McCarthy and bring in Sean Payton. Um, I don't know because there's a lot of people that said that McCarthy's done enough where he's not going to get. Fired, I saw but. I saw a stat. They've is it back to back twelve win years for the first time since like ninety three ninety four. Oh really? Yeah, I don't know. I oh, yeah. didn't see that. I'm a big McCarthy fan. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. coach. Packers. And a lot of those, a lot of his guys are Packer guys. I don't mind. I don't mind him. Uh, I think the grass is always greener. So when yeah. Sean Payton's out there, and he was on the Cowboys staff years ago, oh, when, yeah. right, as assistant. So I think they're, everyone's like, oh, get him, get him. But there's also, I listen to Bill Simmons, and they think he might go back to the Saints. You know, really? Like, all they needed was, like, he just needed a year or just whatever. Just wanted a year you off. Know? Yeah, but, so I don't know. I, the Saints I don't, probably don't want him back because they know if another team's going to hire him, they're going to get a ransom in draft picks. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah, I think he's still in their contract. Isn't that how it works? Um, I think so. I would imagine you got to trade for him or yeah. something right it's like so, a john gruden thing yeah yeah so i don't know I, I don't mind mccarthy um what i do what i i think i think it gets magnified because everything that cowboy any cowboys player mm-hmm. or coach does gets magnified for because sure that's, because of the position you know, it's in. Yeah, yeah yeah so i don't know it he doesn't bother me people always ask about dak too i was like i like dak yeah i think he's a good quarterback um I mean, people were saying, uh, "What's his name from the Raiders?" Just got benched for throwing fourteen interceptions. Derek Carr and uh, and Dak has fourteen and, and played in the five less games. games. I saw it. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know, man. I just hey, uh, yeah, we'll Pack- Packers went all those years far throwing twenty eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I I don't know. I just, it's what we have been doing though this year more is going to my 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 parents to watch it. Me yeah. and Taylor will go over there. So that's a lot of fun. That's my cool. dad my dad said he likes when people are over because he gets he still gets a little stress yeah. when he's by himself. Like he gets he works himself up too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll go over there and try to keep his heart heart rate down. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Saving lives. Yeah. Saving lives by watching Cowboys. Yeah. 
Yeah. But yeah, I I just don't want him to get. I don't want Mateo to get to the point where I'm not there, and I really wasn't there very in a short period of time where. Like if a team I liked lost, yeah. like it was the end of the world. I remember you talking about this with some of uh, our, some of the guys that I yeah. uh, went to high school with, yeah. like Ohio State. Yeah, like that. I think like I've gotten a lot better at that. Yeah, you know it's it's funny because I was I actually thinking about this earlier. You know, in terms of like fandom, I was talking to a couple of people at school about this. You know, being a Packers fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm Packers in an Orioles fan, right? It's a lot easier being an Orioles fan, sure, because there's never any expectations. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> right there's there's never yeah. i mean i mean you're competing in the AL East with the yankees red sox they're always gonna be the big the big boys the rays arguably the best run franchise in all mm-hmm. sports and like you know from a from a uh, recency bias the blue jays probably with the top young prospects coming up never any expectations easy been orioles fan packers yeah. fan hard yeah i mean it's probably one of like what four or five franchise franchises where like that expectation is a super bowl every single year yeah. and you've had hall of fame quarterback play for 30 straight years now and that's always – it's kind of like being a Steelers fan or a Cowboys fan. Yeah. That's always expectation. So it's a lot harder being that. It's like now it's like I'm getting over like, hey, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So my, my dad thought it was funny because I want the uh, – I want the, the Spurs to lose every game. Yeah. You know, because – Traffic. The, because uh, – when Benyama is the number one draft pick, who's they said is the best prospect since LeBron James, yeah. and uh, he's this freak. He's like seven two, and he can do everything. And and my dad's like, I think it's it's just so weird when you come in the house and you're like, yeah, they lost again. Yeah, you're like, like, excited right. about it. Yeah. I was like, Dad, you got sometimes you got to you got to throw yeah. away a season. You oh know? yeah, but you could never do that with like like you said the Packers, the Cowboys. You can't just yeah, I mean, like you, throw it away. It's hard to do that in the NFL. Yeah, it really is. I mean, yeah. you've seen it in baseball, you've seen it in basketball. Uh, it's just hard to do that in the NFL. There's certain there's certain franchises you can't. They can't. I yeah. mean, Green Bay, Pittsburgh, New England, Dallas. Yeah. Just can't do that. Well, Pittsburgh, um, the uh, the coach there are they are they above five hundred or at five hundred? Yeah, they're somewhere? floating right around it because they're they're fighting for the playoffs. Yeah, because they he's never had a season under five hundred. Oh, really? No, Tomlin isn't. Yeah, okay. so that that's what they were they were talking about that, or people have been talking because it looked like for a while, like oh, it's, I think that's I think that streak's going to end. Yeah, I know they're know? I know they're floating with there because seven and eight. Are they? Cause yeah. I know when, when Green Bay beat Miami on Sunday, I got some text messages from Steeler fans thanking me. Oh, really? Because they're, they're trying to they're trying to get them that helped them. <laughs> yeah, they're a game. Well, they're a game behind the Dolphins, but yeah, the Patriots and Jets are also in front of them. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Um, <coughs> um, what was the one? Oh, uh, since this is New Year's Day, it, yeah. it'll be out tomorrow on the second. Do you do you ever make resolutions or anything? No. No, no, so I don't. <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting. So, like, I read, I read a lot. You know, I read a lot about like goal setting and mm-hmm. you know things like that. So, like, James Clear has a, a fantastic book, Atomic Habits, and uh, Steve Magnus with Do Hard Things, and Joshua Medcalf, and, and these guys. And like the common like theme that they all talk about is like like goal setting, and and really kind of like they really got to the point where. And at Metcalf, you like wrote a book called "Burn Your Goals" because that's how much he hates goals. Yeah, you know, with it, and kind of like the premise of everything is, you know, you shouldn't be so goal oriented because sometimes you could do everything you need to do, but not re- receive the result of it. Yeah, and then ultimately that could detract you even further from in, from like what you're trying to do. So it becomes more of like lifestyle and what type of lifestyle do you want? Yeah, and and things like that. So for example, it's like. Um, like the common examples these guys use is like, you know, your goal shouldn't be to run a marathon. Your goal is to be a runner, mm. you know, and how do you get to be a runner? The guy, you're going to run, you know, X amount of miles every single day type yeah. of thing, you know? So if you get to, if you get to the marathon, great, but like ultimately what you've, you've established are, are, are structures and systems of who you are with your lifestyle type of stuff. So, you know, I don't really set goals, <laughs> for it it's kind of like talking about like i what are some like who do i want to become almost yeah like and, and all that stuff is you know stuff i've learned over the last couple of years you know with that so it's more of that mindset i think more than anything and then like hey i'm gonna lose 10 pounds or yeah. or read x amount of books you know i don't want to you know sit there and be like hey i read 32 books this year whatever it is i'm like yeah, i want to be a reader you know type of stuff so that's more of the mindset do you guys at the schools do you have like development plans and stuff where you make goals and you yeah, like, try to right yeah so that's a big so we have um the teacher evaluation system is, is called otez and it's actually otez 2.0 now so <laughs> nail it right um 
Nail it part two. So, and, and big, a big part of that is professional growth plans. So every teacher has to, as an administrator too, has to make a professional growth plan, uh, which really is, is about two goals you got to do. Um, and it could be really about anything. And um, the way that we've approached it, at least within our building, was, you know, we, we sit down with the teachers and kind of talk about, you know, what are some things that you've always wanted to try mm-hmm. that maybe you never had an opportunity to try before that really kind of get you like geeked up about teaching and focus your goal on that. And then kind of like the terminology I've always used is like kind of reverse engineer that goal. And for example, like we wanted to get away from uh, like, a, like an old mindset where everything was like, like product oriented, you know, for example, like our, under the old evaluation system, it was very like metric based. Yeah. For example, like, you know, I had a, like a teacher a couple of years ago who, whose goal was under the old system was, you know, I want 85% of my kids to score 90% or higher mm. on this end of the year test. Yeah. And it was really just a hoop to go through, right? Because it wasn't necessarily like you weren't like crafting anything with your teaching or trying to improve on it, something you just wanted an outcome yeah, with yeah. it. And what's funny was I had a really good relationship relationship with the teacher. And I was like, Do you know what your results were this year? It was like 96 percent. You actually want to get worse this year. <laughs> he kind of looked at me. He goes, I use the same goal every year, Scott. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I mean, let's think about this differently then. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for example, I had a conversation with the teacher last year. You know, it's kind of like the same type of like goal. Like I want, you know, on the star test, which measures like reading or math comprehension. Like, oh, let's think about this. When you were in July and you started thinking about this upcoming year, yeah, what were you, what were some of the things that you wanted to try differently that got you excited? And the teacher said, like, well, I really wanted to incorporate more young adult fiction book into my classroom library. I said, okay, let's 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 start there for our goal. Then. Yeah. She and then she goes, how to, how can that be a goal? Well, let's talk about this. So why do you want to incorporate young adult fiction into your library? She said, well, when I was talking to the eighth grade ELA teachers, they have, they have really extensive classroom libraries. Mm-hmm. They said the young adult fiction are always the most checked out books. I said, okay, good. So why do you think they're, what's the benefit of being checked out the most? She goes, well, they're, I know they're reading them the yes, most. Yeah. I said, very good. So what's the benefit of kids reading a lot? What improves their like, reading comprehension, fluency, written expression? All those things, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, and that's like kind of like what I mean, like reverse engineering goals. So, yeah. okay, so you want to improve kids' reading comprehension, fluency, written expression. And the way that you're going to do that is then by offering more young adult fiction books yeah. into your library. And so now what we have to do is, and there's like action steps and like protocols, like how are you going to track that? Yeah. So then we created a system for like how the teacher was going to like, um, track how many young adult fiction books were being checked out and how she was going to conference with those kids and then how she was going to take work samples to measure to see if there was an improvement with the kids checking out those books in those three areas versus the kids that weren't yeah. the type of thing. So that's kind of like the more of the mindset we're kind of looking at to kind of get teachers kind of like geared up something like they're specifically interested in as opposed to just kind of like, I just want them to score this on this the This number. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's more meaningful to them um, doing it that way. Um. And so that's kind of like the, the the route we've taken with that, which I think kind of fits, you know, the the lifestyle type of word a little better. That's what we – so when I was at the Metro Parks, cause I always feel like um, the Metro Parks have a development plan and goals mm-hmm. and stuff. But, like, I asked about the teachers because for us, like, we can, like, go to trainings or do this experience and do that. Like, for f- I'm glad you went through that because for me, as, like, as a teacher to set – goals it'd be it would seem difficult because you're like well i'm teaching kids on a daily basis i can't like on the on this day i can't go do this thing all yeah, the right. time or whatever yeah. so it but but like i said i'm glad you went through that because yeah. ours ours is a lot um we have like three categories mm-hmm. um and we set goals some and one of the categories is training and development so one of the goals is like hey i want to take a um small engine class so then if they take it and then like based on the criteria we said it's either you you met this goal or you exceeded yep. this goal right so so meeting it would be like i took a class exceeding it would be i took a class and i taught two of my gotcha, coworkers yep. some things yep. you know about it so um but there's no there's also no incentive for them yeah. to do it so the union decided like hey we we're going to we're going to not tie pay to it yeah um for me i'm not in the union there is incentive like if i meet my goals i get 
I get a certain percentage for each goal mm-hmm. I meet. So it's like I'm trying to do these things. But also the same thing how you talked about that goal with the, the teacher bringing, it, bringing books in is like my goals aren't just like goals for me to, so I get paid more money. They're also developing like me to become a better leader or – for sure. Or this goal pertains to how my guys are doing other things. So it's how can I manage them to make mm-hmm. sure they're cleaning the bathrooms mm-hmm. correctly and all this stuff. So cause cause we I think it's real easy and my boss is really good at not getting of not letting us get away with easy goals yeah. just to say we met a goal. And that's uh, you know with the PGPs of teachers, it's very intrinsically based because there really isn't I mean, from an accountability standpoint, I mean, it's not tied to your pay, mm-hmm. right? It's it's not tied to it's it's tied to your valuation. I mean, a little bit, but not like the old evaluation system was um, at all. It's really intrinsically based, yeah. And that's kind of like my, at least my messaging to teachers has always been: is you know, the, only, the number one person that's accountable for this is you, yeah. So make this something that you want to be worthwhile, and it could extend over multiple years. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a teacher. Okay. Um, you know, last year who wanted, whose frustration was, you know, we've got this like retake policy with tests and kids weren't taking advantage of it. And so the teacher wanted to figure out, you know, how can I get more kids to take advantage of this retake policy with it? And so we had kind of like wordsmith and kind of like brainstorm different things. Like, well, what's, you know, what's like, what would you say would be like effective improvement of retake? He goes, well, if I have you know, X amount of kids are eligible to take a retake. I'd like to have like 85% of them to take advantage of it on their own. Yeah. I said, okay, so where are we at right now? And so we developed a kind of like a, a process. I said, at the end of the year, if you went from like 15% of the kids doing it to, to 25% of the kids doing it, that's not a failure. Yeah. You grew by 10%, right? Are, are you where you want to be? No. So maybe we keep the same goal and every year we add an action step to it. Oh, this is okay. what we're going to do differently this year to kind of, to, to kind of like, try to put push need a little bit more mm-hmm. and once we kind of get into place the results that you want then it's then it's no longer kind of a goal it's a system you've created your system that works now yeah now it's time to move on to a different goal okay you know type of thing yeah so we've attacked it that way too so you know a lot of times our teachers have these, these goals that are they're multi-year in base because you can't necessarily solve them or mm-hmm. accomplish or create a system in one year it, yeah. take, it takes a couple of years i do like that and maybe i'll use that because i have i think there's some goals that maybe don't get written down because like, oh, I can't accomplish this, you know, yeah. in a year. But maybe maybe just like with that, like, okay, mm-hmm. maybe um, I have someone who wants to do stuff with our beds and put them on the system that we use. Like, all right, well, maybe this first goal is for you to put 25% of the beds into the system so we, we're ready to go do yeah, this. Yeah, for sure. And then the next year, uh, we bump that up and then we add this other yeah. thing or whatever. You no, know, we have you know several teachers that are they're be working really hard with this concept of like the modeling way of teaching. Um, which is a lot of like group collaborative type of thing, kids problem solving, mm-hmm. you know, the kids being presented a, a situation and them discovering their learning on their own and whether it's right or wrong. Yeah. And then, you know, potentially they could go three days into a lesson and realize, oh, wait, what we thought was true on Monday isn't true. And then yeah. they have to backtrack, you know, type of thing. Yeah. And so we've got a lot of teachers that are kind of like interested in that because it's like, it's probably the most effective way to learn, right? Because you're like, the kids are discovering on their own. Mm-hmm. It's collaborative. It's creative. It's problem. It's critical thinking. All these different things, but it's really hard to implement. Yeah, it's super hard to implement. So like, we have several teachers who've dabbled in that, and to completely change your classroom like that is just impossible <laughs> in, a, in a year. Yeah. So a lot of their goals are like, I'm going to do one lesson like this per unit, you know, type of thing. And mm-hmm. if it goes well, the feedback, and then the, they're going to carry that over to like, I, I did one for this unit. Okay, now I'm going to do another one. You know, so it could be two. Yeah, you know, the next year or three to to build up that repertoire of of those lessons that they in, incorporate that type of learning. So, um, you know, and the the key to with what we do is like having that autonomy to kind of like pick what you want. Yeah, as well. And that's what I tell my guys too. Like, hey, these are your goals. Yeah, like I'll help you. You know, I'll help you write them. But if I create them for you. Then what? Then there's no incentive for you to want to do any of it for sure because there's you have no you have not invested any time or effort into yeah. it. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. That's fine. Don't just make it up because you don't have to do it. But I want everyone to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you have goals, let's write them and talk about them. And you you're more likely to well, achieve them if they're I, yours. Well, I think the honest conversation is if like if you're creating your goals for your employees, then they're not their goals. A hundred percent. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. why they're my why? goals for you. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> I, and there's, a, there's probably a place for that, uh-huh. you know, in certain times in, in both your, your line of work and my line of work too. Yeah. Um, but it's probably not, not going to get to like the, the investment and the ownership that you want. Yeah. It's like, you're just like, you need to do this. The good thing about my staff right now is that they're real young 
and they all want to move up from where they're at. Yeah. So it makes it a little easier to write goals mm-hmm. because, like, well, I don't want to stay in this position yeah. for forever. And I for want sure. To keep doing but, like, I don't, I don't know if that's, like, you creating goals as much as, it's like, mentoring and, and creating, like, building capacity for them. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, thought, I talk about staff capacity a lot with our staff. You know, and there's, there's certain individuals in our building that I know have, like, really great aspirations to go into administration. And I know that. And so I've had these conversations with them. Like, I'm going to have you handle this situation. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to have, put you in front of this audience right here because this is a good way to kind of build your skill set, you know, type of thing. And they're like, okay, you know, and, and they're appreciative of that. That's mm-hmm. so like, I want to say, I've like, it's like goals that maybe I've created for them because I'm trying to build their capacity because I know where they want yeah. to go afterwards. And yeah. So I, I think that's worked out pretty well for a couple of these people. I do that with uh, someone we just hired. Uh, she's a crew leader. So she's she's a supervisor like me, just on a lower level. Uh, she'll super supervise our seasonals when they come back. Mm-hmm. But I told her I was like, because I know what you want to do eventually. You know, I'm gonna basically have you do everything that I do, yeah. like on a smaller scale. And and I do that with other people who I know want to want to eventually be in management. Like mm-hmm. it's gonna make it seem like I'm not doing my job, but I'm teaching you how to do. For sure, these, these different skills and that, that you're going to need. That's all like part of your responsibility, though. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, is to it's it's. I mean, if you make the analogy to coaching, right, it's to you know s- making sure that you set up everybody for whatever their aspirations mm-hmm. are. And I think that's one thing that Perrysburg Schools have done really well with. You know, is, is kind of like you know growing some your own aspirations from within. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they've been really really good with that, with being able to do that with different people, myself included. So but yeah, I think that's just part of your responsibility of, of your position yeah and and i've talked to i think i talked to our chief of operations so my boss's boss and talked about developing and this is when i went for a job here you know um the director of maintenance here and i and we would we would openly talk have conversations mm-hmm. about my interview and things uh, the process i was going through and everything and you know he made a point to say like we sh- we can't be scared to develop employees um, because they're going to leave. Yeah, don't lose them. Yeah, right. Yeah, he goes because at the at the very uh, we if we're developing people where other people want them, then we've done a good job. Yeah, and at the very least, if we develop somebody and they don't leave, we just created a very good employee for ourselves. And you're strengthening your own system. Yes, if yeah. you continue to strengthen these other people all around yeah. you, you're strengthening your own system. Yeah, because because I, I think a lot of companies are like, well. We got to develop him just enough where yeah. <laughs> no one else is going to want him, but yeah, right? we know what he's capable yeah, of. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. This whole notion of like, I'm not saying this This is within the, the schools for Rye Work or, or yeah. Rework, but you hear about this all the time. Is like, you know, the you don't get in, internally promoted because nobody, they can't replace you in whatever you were before. Yeah. You know, I think it's just, it's just kind of rubbish a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, you can't, you just can't think like that. We, we, uh, and we, at the Metro Parks, it seems like we're, we're always preparing people for when people either leave or move up mm-hmm. that way like we know what's behind for sure what's the, what the next supervisor is and even now we're like we we talk me and my boss will talk like well who's who's the next regional manager who that's mm-hmm. the position my boss is and you know he's told me he goes i think it's between you and, and this other guy you know and then he's like well who's the supervisor because then we start it's just a waterfall yeah. well then if we leave so, then who's the next supervisor chess you know? match almost you know yes. aligning your pieces on where this happens this could go all the way through yeah. so yeah yeah but sure. just having options yeah. you know like like when your position came up that you have now like what when don was deciding to leave like well who's our options you mm-hmm. know then that's the, and if we have a bunch good that's the better and if we don't For have sure. any you're like okay but well, now we got to think about how <laughs> we are preparing these people yeah right before now yeah you know? so it's yeah, yeah it's good i mean it's yeah. but like i said before it's all it is is for the metro parks or wherever it is it's strengthening who you strengthen your system yeah you know strengthening your your team yep all the way through i mean why wouldn't you want that oh for sure yeah I it just mean, makes everyone better all the time yeah right i mean exactly <laughs> <laughs> all right man well i appreciate you coming yeah, out absolutely. here man uh, i'm glad you're able to to come see the studio not on youtube yeah i like uh, it you know i like it uh it's nice nice uh area. i like the old rustic lacquer look over here too <laughs> hey right? kid no so, one can see any of that stuff we'll have to show them yeah take pictures um yeah do you do you listen to your own episodes when you come on here i do not know do you, okay no. i didn't i didn't think you did no um, I, don't. I don't listen to any of them yeah uh, i listen a little bit because i gotta edit it but i don't i never sit through and listen to them anymore. i think you should listen to it like because part of it's like I mean, the coaching you right. You watch you watch your own game film, your practice yeah. film, right? You should watch it nah, and be know. like, "Hey, I gotta be careful what I say here, <laughs> or this mannerism I do here, or whatever." I think that's a good practice. For I, uh, I I did at the beginning because yeah. I, I edited more stuff out when it was like me and Andrew when we yeah. first started the podcast. Um, but but I just I I don't know. I just can't. I I, I get enough 
when I got to edit it. Yeah, you know, I'm I, sure. When I, especially the video. I think the video having video helps because the record speed from audio and video don't match up. So when I match it up at the beginning of yeah. the episode, about every depends from ten to twenty minutes. I gotta I gotta cut pieces out to fit the audio and the video really? together. Yeah, I didn't know that. So I gotta listen. I gotta listen to more of it because no. the speeds are different. But that's all right. Hey, I got a question for you. Yeah, though. yeah. Hey, uh, are we going to get back to our play-by-play roots of Little League baseball this summer? <laughs> I thought about that uh, every once in a while when I'm like listening to someone, you know, listen to a game or whatever. I remember when we when we did that. I don't know because I got a coach. I got him coaching a travel softball team. So, um, but that was that was fun. Oh, yeah, that was I fun. That. You do I, it again. I would like to get headset mics like like they like professionals use yeah. it makes it a little easier but maybe i can borrow them because i know uh taylor rogers has them at the high school so okay. maybe they'll let me borrow them just a couple of seconds so we can do it because it'd be it'd be nice to um i did like being in that room because no one could hear us yeah but i think part of it too is is being out there so maybe we can be like more out that'd be cool you know to see we'll see what, what get more up. fan involvement yeah 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 that'd be awesome <laughs> plan a little more <laughs> yeah right uh but before we go you know i just want to remind everyone we're here at Fro- uh, fort meg's crossfit studios um i talked about at the beginning of the podcast and i talked about every podcast but if you want more information go to fort meg's crossfit.com scott thanks again for coming out here thanks for having me. thank you for downloading this episode of the nerdball podcast i appreciate you listening I appreciate you watching now on YouTube, so please subscribe to that. We have most of our listeners are not subscribers, so if you subscribe, hit that little bell. It doesn't really you know, hurt you, but it helps us immensely. Um, find us on, all social, on uh, all social medias, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Please write the show at thenerdballpodcast at gmail.com. Um, just interact with the podcast. Like, if you'd like to be on the podcast, inter- interact and uh See if we can, if I can get you out here and uh, get you interviewed. We are on. Um, uh, we now have a podcast network, the Nerdball Network, and that the, our new show is Three Different Dads. It was on here for a while, and now we created our own feed. So, so please subscribe to that wherever you listen to this podcast. We're also on YouTube for th- at Three Different Dads. Any of the social medias, it's uh, the number three different dads on Twitter and Instagram. And we have a Facebook page, Three Different Dads. So please um, like those pages and subscribe to wherever you listen to this podcast. We are we're having a lot of fun with that. So um, please let's get that going. Thanks as always to Cuttlefish Graphics, the Junior High STEM Lab, and Big Daddy Graphics for helping out the podcast. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>